S there. So uh, again, this is the mobile marketing class and the first discussion today will be, and let's uh, not sign out of my email here. Um, again, most of us, most of what I'll talk about first would be just uh, mobile design in general. Um, we all know about marketing kind of, you know, online is, you know, finding people to either buy service online. Um, I teach people about writing online. I teach people about uh, um, images online. Uh, the main kind of uh, websites that I market, uh, of course, would be my digital media website, which I don't do a very good job marketing right now. Um, but uh, I do work for a company that I do a lot of marketing for, and it's called zircon.com. And so um, the other thing I'll talk a lot about today is, um, is video and making the connection. For me, marketing uh, a lot is I do a lot of videos. I make videos of every product we make. I make an instructional video on how to use that product. And so these videos are on the website as well as on YouTube. And as far as programming wise, I make a connection between the website and the YouTube channel, and the YouTube channel and the website. And so if I click on a video, let's say I want to watch this product, it goes to it goes to the video, but this video is really on YouTube. So going through and making these connections, a lot of online marketing and marketing online is making connections between Instagram and your site, between YouTube and your site, or even just YouTube. And, you know, people don't even need to go to this site. They can just go to YouTube and learn about the product. So... You know, those kind of things. Uh, also, the number one thing I have is instructions because I sell a product. People want to find out how to use the product. So one thing I, I do do that helps people a lot, and we're going to go and do this right now. You're going to go and do this. So is your computer turned on? Yeah, I'll show you how to turn it on. Put your left hand up. Put it around the corner. Push the button. There you go. Push the button. We'll send this to the instructor whenever we do so that they can give you credit. So, here we go. You don't have to do anything yet. I'm just still talking. So, uh, again, I just said instructions, right? Oh, my majority of people go to my website. They want instructions. As well as uh, um, marketing-wise, if I'm in a store... And I'm looking at a product, right? I'm looking at a product on the shelf, and it's just, you can read what's on the product. But, you know, wouldn't it be great if I could get more information from the packaging? And that's where the QR code comes in. Have you heard of QR codes? There's a little thing. So we're going to make one right now. We're going to learn how to make one right now. So let me just show you how I do it. And then we'll do one together. So... Let me type in uh, product name. Again, here's my products. I got a whole bunch of them. But you'll notice, let's say this one right here. Oh, that's not a very big one. I need a bigger one. Let's see. Let's see. Big, 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 big. Big, big. Is this one? No, that's not big enough. That's not big enough. This is somewhat big enough. It's big enough for me to show you. Um, let me open it up, maybe. There we go. Okay, so on the store shelf, as the person's walking along, they can see, boom. On the packaging itself is a QR code. So what can be done with this QR code? Well, the per person can scan that with their mobile phone, click, and it will take you to a web page that I built for them that gives you the instructions, a video, and then more information about the product without more than just the instructions like that you can read. And so uh, I didn't bring a package today. I would love to have, uh, so that's why I'm looking at a package online. Uh, but, you know, when I introduced this to the company probably about seven years ago, I would say, maybe 2000, 
2003. I guess that would be five years ago. Yeah, I'd say 2003, maybe 2002. So, you know, why don't we put QR codes on the packaging so that people can get more information? And so, uh, how this company works is we sell products to Home Depot, to Lowe's, to um, Ace Hardware, mostly hardware. Sorry, Amazon. We haven't even talked about Amazon. Whoosh. Amazon's a big thing. So, uh, so what I did was, you know, we said, oh, okay. And then the, the owners of the company thought it was good. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good idea. You know, they think that. But every February, they have to go to, go, uh, go to Home Depot. And they go to Home Depot and they say, this is the product line that we're going to have for this new year coming up. This is what we want you to have in the store. This is, you know, what you want because they buy from us, you know, and then they have to, you know, Home Depot has to say yes, no, or maybe, or this one, or that one, or that product we'll take, or that one we won't take, and so on. But we, we told them we were going to start putting the QR code on the packaging. And Home Depot was just like, no, that, that's a stupid idea. They didn't, they didn't believe in it. You know, they were just like, you know, uh, you know, especially back then, 2003. No, what am I saying? Not three. No, way back then. I'm talking 2000 and, what is it, 2018? Yeah, I'm, t I'm talking 2013. I'm a 10 years off there. Talking 2013, 2012, somewhere around there is when I we started that. And then, you know, Home Depot was just like, you know, they were kind of, oh, you know, that's not really, okay. You can do it then. Because we have to, they have to approve what goes on the packaging. Because that package is on their shelf. And literally, we had to get their approval to put that QR code on the packaging. But they finally said, oh, yeah, go ahead, whatever. But then, the year later, we were able to go back. And through Google Analytics, through web stats, we, we were able to prove, you know, people were clicking on that 500 a month. You know, that doesn't seem like a lot. We sell, you know, millions of these a year. But still, we were able to say, you know, there's 500 people that click that code in a one-month time. And then they started, oh, okay, well, yeah, maybe this is a good thing. In fact, they started using QR codes now. If you go to Home Depot now, you'll see QR codes around the store. I was the one, you know, they didn't believe in it. I sort of introduced that to them. Okay, so as far as mobile marketing, since the name of the class is mobile marketing, hey, you know, that is one of the best things in mobile marketing is a QR code. Now, the biggest challenge, though, and downfall, of course, is the, uh, the person needs an app to do it. Snap or Instagram can do it, though. And I think Snapchat, too. So if you have Instagram and Snapchat, you can click a QR code and it'll go to the information. So uh, let me find one, and then we'll go and make one. Um, I wish I wish I could make this. Oh, look, we can make this bigger. Uh oh, let me see. Can I get? Let me zoom up here. Let me see if I can get big enough so we can click on it. It's so close to being big enough. Let me see if I, it will work. If it's clear enough. Let's see. So I got a QR code reader on my phone, and so let me see. I think one of my my iPads better. Oh, it did work. Oh, but my um, wide wireless. Oh, it did. So as you can see, I have a photo. And then this one has the language. Well, it says English right now, but we, we plan on putting this in Europe. That's why I'm giving the language. So if you hit the English, of course, and then, of course, social media. Yeah, so then it goes to, as you can see, the, the um, a web page like that that has all the information on it and then you can click on the video right there goes right to YouTube and then uh, the people can watch the video that I made right on YouTube right away That's my little room because I have it at the beginning. So we have a whole bunch of products. Has three modes. Stat scan, oh, okay. the center of stats, up to three quarters of an inch deep. Okay, so um, you get the idea. Let's make one real quick. So uh, I want you to make one today, and we'll send it to the instructor, email it to him, and say, hey, look what I made. Okay, so um, it would be uh, 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 QR code dot k a y w a dot com q 
Q-R-C-O-D-E dot K-A-Y-W-A dot com. So we'll go and make one right now. So, well, is it not working? Right there, somewhere in there. The browser's at the bottom. Your Windows user, aren't you? Uh oh. You might need to use it. Uh oh. What is that? See if it'll work. So QR code dot K A Y W A dot com. Okay, so uh, again, as far as mobile marketing, this is a really good idea. So let's talk about where the QR code came from. The QR code came from Japanese car industry. Um, you know, Japanese car companies, Subaru, whatever, um, you know, Honda, Toyota, they wanted to track the parts as it went through the factory. And so they invented this code called a QR code to track the parts as it went through the factory. And people were like, wow, what a great idea. So it's a little bit different than the barcode. You see, we've been using barcodes for what products? You know, you go to the supermarket and check out, bing, bing, bing. It's a little bit different. It's called a QR code. But, um, uh, you can put in almost anything. So on this website, they have two types of QR codes. They have a dynamic one and a static one. The dynamic one, they want you to pay. What is the dynamic one? Well, it's a code that can change over time. So one of the problems with the code is that it goes to a web address. And if you want to change the web address, it's not that easy. I can change it by using a redirect, but that's not the best way to go. Some, some you know, that's, a, that's kind of a... Not a, a great way to go using a redirect, but it does work. So they offer this idea of called something called dynamic IP addresses or dynamic uh, QR codes, which means you can actually change where it goes over time. Um, but they want you to pay for that. But you can make a free one by using static. So the first box I want you to click on is go to static and then what I want you to do is type in your favorite address or type in your favorite video or type in your favorite thing. You can go to any address up here if you want. Um, again, if I was going to put in, uh, let's say you want them to go to my company, I could go, I could go like this. Oh, don't forget the forward slash. So all, webs, all web addresses kind of start with HTTP, right? If it's a secure website, right, one that is uh, secure, it starts with an S. S there, HTTPS, then you can put colon, forward slash, forward slash, and I'm going to put www.zircon.com, like that. And so any address like that, um, S is very popular now. You want your website to be secure. What the S means, of course, is that it's secure. What does the secure mean? Well, it uses encryption. So if you're sending personal data back and forth, it's going to be encrypted which means it's scrambled and un unencrypted on the other side, right? And so uh, most websites are going with the S today. Um, Google is demanding it. If you want to get your website in Google, you can get a website that's not secure in Google, but um, that's one thing that makes you rank higher in Google is if your website is secure. So if we hit generate right now, it'll, say, it'll give you this message. You just close it. Boom. So then you, there you go. You have your code right there. I can use my phone. I can come over there. Just block it now. <laughs> block the thing here. And you can click on your code. And boom, it'll go right to the website with one simple click without having to type. So it's very useful as far as marketing-wise. Or uh, another one might be uh, you can put in all kinds of things in there. I, I tend to put YouTube in there when I'm showing that. So type in your favorite song. What's your favorite song? Uh, mine is uh, 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 Rick Ashley. Rick Ashley, never going to give you up. You love that song, don't you, from the 80s? This one, yes. My students love it. I, I, I have them play this. 
this one. There you go. And you can hit the share button right there. See the share button? And you can copy that. Command C because we're on a Mac. If it was Windows, we'd use Control C, right? And I go to my G QR code. I put that video in there. Command V is paste. And then I hit generate. And there we go. You can close this window right there. And then I come over here. There we go. Send this to your friend. Hey, look at that. And we immediately go to our rig Ashley is here somewhere. Uh, still loading videos. I'm not very fast on this. But it will load our Rick Ashley song here. And somewhere. So you can do almost anything. You can do your uh, uh, Facebook, right? You want you want people to go to your Facebook. Or maybe your LinkedIn account. You guys have LinkedIn, right? Right? No, not yet. Someday you'll have LinkedIn. But if you have LinkedIn, you want people, you know, it's a great marketing scheme for getting a job, right? We got to play a little bit of the song. I'm sorry. Put it in your head for the rest of the day. You'll be going out to the farmer's market to get a piece of fruit. You'll be coming back with this in your head. I, the reason why I, I use this video is because in my computer science class, I teach them the QR code, just like you are when I'm teaching like web kind of stuff. And then uh, um, there was a virus that came out in early 2000. Well, not 2000, early 2000, when YouTube first came out, like 2006, 2007, when YouTube first came out. Somebody wrote a virus that was a, a, br a browser virus that had some JavaScript code or something that redirected you to the video. And so you would, you know, you would get that virus and your web browser would keep constantly playing this song over and over again. It was called the Rick Ashley virus. It was painful because a lot of people don't like the song. But that was quite funny. Quite funny. Okay, so to save this code to send to your teacher, because I want you to send, make, get them a good video. What I want you to do is find a good video and make a code and then send it to the teacher. Go ahead, do that now. Go find a code, and I'll show you how to save it. Go find a code. Go to, again, go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. Type in your favorite song. Mine, oh, I've been listening to a lot of this FM 84. You ever oh, here it is. This one this is my favorite music now. From like 80s, like synthesized music. There we go. Love it. It's my I listen to this all the time now. So it's great working, right? I'm clicking away. The music just keeps me clicking. Again, the share button is right here. So find a video, click the share button, copy that. Remember, we're on a Mac, so we use Command C, and you go to the QR code generator and use Command V. Here, I'm going to actually copy that myself. Copy, go here, paste, generate. You can close this after you hit generate. And then I'll show you how to save that code. We'll keep that music forever. So they do have a download button there, but um, that makes you want to pay or something. I don't know what that does. So let me go back. Oh, don't click the download button. <laughs> don't click the... What's that? Yeah, yeah. I put them on my product. It's on the back of my products. Um, so here, let me, uh, let me get it again. I'm so sorry. I, I closed it. Um... Here we go. Why does it keep going here? Oh, God. what? What? What's that? Oh, I'm I'm still on static. Oh, there we go. Generate. Okay, close that. Once you got it here, don't click on these things down here. Just right click on it and save image as. Right click on it and save image as, and then put it on your computer. Right. I use this website right now, and it'll be appealing. So give it a name. This is going to my my music. 
and then uh, put it somewhere. I'm going to put it on desktop. See it right there, desktop. I have a messy desktop. But again, the easiest way of save it is right click, save image as. Or if it's not letting you do that, you can take a screen capture, Command Shift 3. Did you get it saved? Yeah. Okay. So you can send it to uh, him on Canva. We'll go to Canva in a little bit and you can send it to the teacher. I don't want extra credit for coming to class. You made a QR code. Okay. Let's move on to another discussion. Let me stop this video for a moment. Okay, let's move on to uh, Google. Um, again, Google is probably the most used search engine. And um, as far as finding content on your phone or finding content on your iPad or even finding content on your computer, a lot of people use Google. What are the other main search engines, of course, would be Bing, which is Microsoft, right? And then you also have, uh, um, 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 I guess, Yahoo. <laughs> Nobody really, I don't use Yahoo really to search for things. And then, uh, um, of course, you have your search function in the browser as well, right? You can search, and it just depends. Um, but Google, of course, is king. So a lot of what we talk about is Google and how Google works. Uh, before Google came out, back in the 90s, there was a lot of search engines, a lot of them. Oh, Excite, Lycos, Infoseek, all of them were very popular. Um, uh, Dogpal is another one. Of course, it's a, a one that searches other search engines. It's called Dogpile. And if you go to Dogpile, this is another one. So if you search something, let's say, and I, I'm sorry, I keep searching stud finders. I just like to see where my products are in, in the search engine. You'll notice that Dogpile searches a bunch of search engines. Okay, most of these are ads, and of course, they don't really tell you that these are ads here on um, Dogpile. See, it says ads related to that, so it shows you mostly ads, ads, ads. And then, of course, if it's not an ad, it's called an organic link. Kind of the term organic link is a non-ad. And so you'll notice this one right here, which is my website right here is showing up kind of below all the ads. And uh, how do I know it's an organic if I don't advertise? <laughs> okay, so this is an issue. And so Home Depot, this is probably an organic link. This one's an ad, it even says ad there, but you'll see I have at least one organic link in there. And so, uh, again, Dogpal is one. It It's kind of, a, you know, you can also do images as well. And they got ads and then they have images and so on. So, uh, Dogpal, and then, of course, Google. Google is king. Um, why did Google become so popular? Well, uh, um, people learned to rely. It was very um, um, good at what it did. Back in the 90s, there was a lot of ways that you could game the system, we'll say. And we would do things like um, hide words in the background that people would type. Because the Internet's all about words, right? You go to Google, you type in a word. Right? You go to, you, you, you do voice command. It's basically a word. Your voice is being turned into words in the computer. And so on. So Google is basically a uh, word-based system. And so they did a really good job at finding what you wanted. And if you, if you have never seen the video on how Google works, we can watch that if you want. We can watch it real quick. It's very short. Um, and if we just say how Google works and if you haven't seen this one this is a very let me pause this video here we're gonna relate it um, again it's a very good video they talk about spiders that was a good concept in there in that that's the term they use to describe the software that goes and reads your content and then puts it into their database and of course uh, they, uh, the, the, the Google spider is called Google bot so your job as a designer or marketing person is to manipulate Google bot but let's relate it to mobile since we're doing mobile so uh, Google came out with their own phone Android phone about what six seven years ago anybody have an Android phone you guys are Apple people okay well it's okay 
that you know Google Phone is is basically Java. It's a version of Java. In fact, Oracle sued Google over stealing code, Java code to put into Android. They did, but uh, of course, Google has billions of dollars, and 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 and. And Oracle has billions of dollars and two billion dollars. You know, they finally settled. Whatever. You know, they gave them a couple million dollars and said, "Go away." Um, so, it's basically a version of Java, and that's why Oracle was suing them because Oracle owns Java. Oracle bought Sun Microsystems, which invented Java in 1995, is when Java first came out. In fact, I, I bought a Java book in 1995 at Stanford, and I started learning it and doing it, and then. I had a couple programs that I was running, and it was it was an object-oriented programming language. And then I kind of went to video, and I started doing more video and video stuff. And I kind of went away, and I should have kept stuck with the Java back in '95. You know, would have been been somebody, right? No, I'm just kidding. It's all right. I can do anything I want. So uh, in this case, uh, um, since Google went to Java and went to the mobile platform, their search on mobile is very, very different for everything, even on your uh, iPhone. Google has embraced the mobile technology and now has you can actually do different results. In fact, if you search on your phone and you search on your iPad, and you, it will, you'll get different results than if you search on the desktop. And so that's what I want to talk about right now. Let's first look at, uh, I'm going to jump a little bit here. Let's go over to, um, we'll go over to the iPad here. I just want to show you the difference here. And so here we go. We have an iPad over here with our apps. I'm not talking apps. I'm still talking mobile, which is basically a browser. We can go to a browser. So we have a browser here. Um, I was looking at, I was thinking of the websites I was going to show you, and one of them was going to be the Zapatos, right? You buy your shoes online, so on. Um, in this case, uh, let's go to a browser on the other side. Let's look at a browser over there. Uh, where are we at here? Let's go to, um, let's go to Yahoo first. So let's just go to Yahoo. So here's the Yahoo uh, web page. Um, on a computer. So uh, think about this for a moment. When you are surfing through a browser, the browser's determining the information you're getting um, by, it sends a signal, you know, hey, you want this web page. That goes to whatever server, whatever server that is, house, is ho hosting the web content. And then that, that, that server's determining the type of information you're getting. And you as a designer, you as a marketing person can can change that according to what device they're using. So it's just like the QR code, right? You click on the QR code, I can have them go anywhere, but my server says, oh, you want this page. I formatted it as you saw for the cell phone with that information on it. Yahoo's doing the same thing. Yahoo is recognizing that I'm using a computer on a Macintosh computer that Macintosh computer is uh, a large format, you know, and in fact, what you're doing is when you are a designer, somebody that designs and programs websites, what you're doing is you're testing the size of the screen, right? That's how I determine what device they're using. Not Well, I can, to tell, I can tell what device they're using as well by the code as well, but most of the design that you see is from the screen size. So... The first thing I do, even before I send the data back to the user, you know, this all happens in less than a second, is you say, what devices are they on by measuring the screen size? And so Yahoo has measured the screen size here and says, oh, okay, well, we're going to send this layout. And boom, this is the layout you're seeing. I see the um, text on the screen and so on, and I see some ads at the top, and you get a little sidebar that's over here. See the sidebar and so on. Uh, but if I go over here to... Yahoo on my iPad, it's going to recognize I'm on an iPad, and it might be a little bit different. It might be the same. Maybe it depends upon um, the screen size as well. If I rotate the screen size, oh, that didn't work very well. Uh oh, now I lost my home. Hmm, okay, well, we'll go there. Really? Uh, you'll notice a little bit different in layout. Um, oh, let's scroll down a little bit. 
You see, I'm missing some, maybe the sidebar there, this, especially down here, I'm missing this stuff that's over here, right? So they're changing the layout according to the device. Again, that's called responsive design. We talked about that early on in today's lecture. Um, and then, boy, we can even go to the phone. Let's go to the phone and see the difference as well. So as far as mobile is concerned here, Yes, yes, there we go. So let's go to a browser here. Let's type in Yahoo here. And again, you'll see the layout is almost totally different. You'll see they even have ads in the background there. See how that, so the programming is different the layout is different in the mobile world. Um, again, we call that responsive design. Uh, there's kind of another way of doing it as well. It's not necessarily doing responsive design where you change the layout. The other way is to send a totally different website. And probably this one is, is a different one. This is probably not responsive design. Because if I shrink this down over here, let's see. So one way to test responsive design is to actually shrink it down. And you'll see, if I shrink this down, it's, it doesn't really change over there. If you look on the screen over there, you'll notice when I shrink it down, it's not the same as what I'm seeing on the, on the, on the mobile. So that is not a really responsive design. What Yahoo is doing is they're sending you a completely new web page that is, that is formatted for the phone. And I used to do that at the Zircon site instead of, because right now they have a responsive design. But what I used to do in, in, before I went to, we went to the responsive design is what I would do is I would have code that tests to see, hey, are they on the phone? If they're on the phone, I send them a whole new website that's formatted for the phone. And it's kind of a better way because then you can, you know, this is really formatted for it. You know, it's not taking that and trying to squeeze it and rebuild it into a mobile screen. I give them one that's just total mobile. And you know, then you can format it. You can then take advantage of mobile things as well. You know, as far as mobile is concerned, you know, one of the advantages, of course, that's different than the computer is, you know, you got the phone capabilities. I can click a button and boom, it'll dial the number, right? One of the things I program in, in mobile world is phone numbers. You know, I put a phone, but, you know, I can't click a phone number here on my computer yet. Maybe I will in the future because it has a microphone and stuff like that. But it doesn't have the cell signal and stuff like that. The other thing is you could take advantage of the camera in your phone, right? And so on. So there's advantages of using the, you know, mobile platform over the desktop platform. Uh, GPS, right? Number one advantage of using a mobile phone over your computer is that, you know, this thing is mobile. <laughs> it can keep track of where you're going. Even in my app design class, we were just learning this week about um, different ways to test your your app as far as the GPS is concerned. And then there's some code that um, you use to keep refreshing the screen so that if they're using GPS, let's say they're looking for directions, right? There's a, a, a way of testing, you know, constantly looping and testing their GPS so that you can, man, I was showing the students that this week, you know. So, um, you know, there's so much advantages in the mobile world, and that's why people are using it mostly for marketing today. And you'll see the, the layout is different. Now, Yahoo has gone to, uh, gone to this format that Google has been starting, and it's called Cards. Okay, and the term we use to use to describe this is cards. Um, Google calls them rich cards. Um, it, they they kind of morph that term from what they used to call rich snippets. Um, early on, Google would format content for a mobile device differently than the desktop, and they would use mostly words, and that's why they were called rich snippets. They were just kind of text words that people would use because. The mobile, you know, one of the downfalls of, of, of the mobile is that it's slow, right? You're, you're having to use the cell phone wireless compared to, the, you know, the desktop computer that could have a wire in the back or Wi-Fi. Whereas if you, you're not even in a Wi-Fi area, you're outside, you're using your cell phone, you know how your cell phone drops sometimes, you, you know, if you don't have LTE or something like that, you know, the, the, this, the data is slow. So what Google used to do is just kind of give you a list of words, you know, so they would reformat it. 
so that it's just word based and they were kind of in a box and they would call it rich snippet. And then of course, you know, since the cell phones are getting better, LTE came out and so on, uh, they've gone to more of what they call um, rich cards, which is basically where they'll show you an image, some information, and some text and in a box. And so Yahoo is doing the same thing. This is called a rich card and so on. So this is the way that they're kind of formatting it. So even if we go to Google right now, let's even do that right now. So let's go to Google here for a moment. Google. And let's search on uh, flowers, right? Mother's Day is coming. So let's do our flower research. So let's type in uh, um, um, flowers. Okay, so here we go. We're going to get a whole bunch of ads. Imagine how much one and inner flowers is paying for this. Well, they probably get a break because they advertise all the time. So that's the other thing to keep in mind is if you are a, a customer and you advertise a lot on Google, they'll give you a break. But if you're a new person, say, I want to advertise for flowers, boy, they're going to charge you. Each each one of those links is going to be 2 $3 a piece right now. I guarantee you some of these right now, this is probably at least $2. If I click on this, whoever bought this ad right here, that's $2 easily. I mean, go ahead. Billion, well, how do you think they got billions of dollars? They, you pay a lot of money for words. And the reason why you, they do that is because uh, they can. <laughs> you don't want that. You don't want that. Hold on. Let me get rid of this. So let's go to Google here. We're going to go to Google here. And let's type in flowers. Let's see what happens. And if you want new location, you say near me, sure. And they'll give you more different results. But as you can see, again, they have the one hit under flowers there. And then they got there. And if we scroll down, you'll see I got... Um, I got some ads. Oh, I'm starting to get a map there. I'm going to go down. I'm going to get a map. Oh, yeah, look at that. And then look down here. I'm going to get down here. And then this is what I'm talking about. If you look here, boom, rich card, boom, text-based. Okay, so you as an owner of a website, you as a designer, you might need to reformat your content for Google Mobile. So there, there is ability to do this. Google will give you the ability to make these kind of rich card looking things like this. And so it's similar content. You still get the map. I still get photos. You can see here I got some photos. Photos here. So you notice them right there. I got some photos here. Again, these are all ads. All these people are paying two, three dollars a piece. Look at that. Um, you can you can Make sure your company is, uh, as you can see the map there, make sure your company is is in Google properly is a great way to go as well. Making sure the, the address, what you're selling, all that information, you can go and give that to Google and they will, get, they will put you properly in the map. That's important. Same with Google Map or Apple Maps as well. Um, then again, you get the it's similar stuff. Oh, uh, look, they're even giving us the cards here. Did you see that? Um, but on, on mobile, it's even... Oh, no, they're going back. It's pretty similar. Not too bad. They're really making both of these blending. And then, of course, Wikipedia is very popular as well. Look at that. And then they have suggestion search words. So all of those things are very useful to the um, Google search. And so formatting your content appropriately for uh, the mobile world or for um, Google is very important, I would say. Making your website is very important as well and so on. So that's kind of my introduction to mobile. You guys all want to go get a piece of fruit? You getting hungry? Let's go get a piece of fruit. I'm going to stop this right Okay, we kind of talked uh, a little bit about uh, the difference between mobile, and I know the video that I, that you see here is probably different than what you could see on my iPad because I didn't don't have any screen recording on my iPad. So <laughs> let me open up uh, my Word document. So uh, I think you know, as far as mobile marketing, uh, the number one thing really is uh, you know what is the operating system 
Um, depends upon, you know, maybe how you design. Uh, one of the things is that people try and do what's called a web app. So there's types of apps that we have out there. You have a traditional app that you go and download through the app store, right? You want, to, you want an Apple app, you go to the app store for that. You want a Android app, you go to Google Play, right? So they have two different things, and those are called traditional apps. And that means that they're programmed either in Java for um, Android or Swift or should we say even Objective-C for uh, Apple. Nobody uses Objective-C really, they use Swift now. It's, Swift is a very powerful object-oriented language we use to make apps. But you can also do what's called a web app, which is where you make a app using traditional HTML, um, you know, JavaScript and so on, and Rails and things like that. And if you if you've seen Netflix, um, basically not Netflix app, but if you've seen Netflix on through a browser on a mobile device, it really works out similar to the traditional app, and it's still going through the browser, so it's not a traditional app, but what we we'll call web app, where they're using uh, mostly Ruby. Uh, is the programming that they use at, at Netflix, and um, and and yeah, let's look at that real quick so we can see that. So, again, if I go to let me bring up my iPad here, and oh, not that one. I wanted that there. Let's go here. Let's see what we need. Uh oh, I'm not logged in yet. So again, if we go to the is it not coming up? No, it's not coming up. What's over there? No, it's on, it's on my computer screen. No? Oh, maybe I got the wrong one. There we go. So we're going to Netflix. Um, Netflix. Netflix. Oh, don't do that. It's probably corn Netflix. Netflix.com. And you start going around. So here is, you know, the Netflix for there. And I guess it had to be signed in. I'm not signed in, I guess. I guess let me see if I can sign in. I don't know what my account is. I really don't. I really don't know. Boy, it's going to be hard to remember my password. No, I'm not going to remember my password. Jeez. <coughs> no. Whatever. You get the point. But my whole point is that people can make <coughs> websites that really act like an app. Uh oh, there's me at the Andy Warhol Museum. <coughs> so uh, if we get back to my handout here, again, mobile-wise, uh, Apple uses the <coughs> what's called iOS is the operating system for their mobile platform. And then you can program directly for the iOS, okay? And so mobile marketing-wise, um, you can do a traditional app or a web app. And, um, you know, what, what is the advantages and disadvantages? Of course, if I wanted to do a traditional app, I could take advantage of the hardware that's inside of the computer or inside the, the device much easier than I can with a web app. So the advantage of a of a, a traditional app here is that you can take advantage of the the camera and so on and those things a lot easier because it's built into the operating system and built into the Swift programming or Android wise as well. Where with a web app and you're using the browser, uh, you got some limitations. Um, so uh, if you're going to design that. Apple has their own standards, and if you want to be a designer, you should learn the Apple standards, which is called the Human Interface Guidelines. 
And Apple was a little further behind than Google at this. I mean, Google really, from the day one when Android came out, they're like, we're going to have a design standard so that the Android works and functions. Because one of the problems with Android is that there were so many different types of phones, right? You have Samsung, HTC, all those, right? And so they really wanted to have a standard design theme. And they call it uh, material design. And uh, Apple didn't quite have that at first. They had, you know, the skewy morphism kind of thing where they had, um, you know, interface guidelines, but they weren't quite as standard as they are today. Now, now, you know, Google or Apple is really, um, you know, really wants you to follow their standards. So if you're going to make things for a mobile device, really, even if it's a website or even if it's a, a, a traditional app, you should follow their guidelines. It's right here. You can see that all the new guidelines they have and when they come out with new things like the, the touch and the, right now the Apple came out with the ability to have two screens open at the same time now so you can have two apps running where pr previously you could only have one okay you can come in if you want or go away my son is here he's gonna go to a flower show let me just say something to them street and go down. So again, this human uh, guidelines is what you should follow. Um, very good. I We go over this in class. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is the orientation and the size, right? The dimensions of the device are very important. So they give you all that so that you can design appropriately, okay? And then the bars, this up here, we use this in, in, in app design all the time, the traditional bar at the top, um, the navigational bar. We use that um, to build apps that are um, standard, right? We want to follow the Apple standard. And so, uh, again, Android has their own devices, as you can see here. Android's a little bit different. They call it material design is their, um, their design standard which is, is quite um, really good. I, I actually like the material design. It has a certain feel to it. But the advantage of following a material design on Android is that your devices are going to follow, follow other devices that are made for Android. Your website, your, your um, you know, they use something called flat design. Flat design is the uh, kind of uh, the idea that, um, and how they brought this out is by using cut out pieces of paper. Okay, so... The Android, um, and if you, I, I have some videos that talk about the, you know, the foundation, but um, they use, you know, they want the design to be kind of like when you were a kid and you used to use construction paper and cut out things and like glue them down on top of each other. A little bit, it's like that. And then, it, you know, as the device has moved up, the shadow comes, you know, and they want to have a little three-dimensional feel to it. So they call it material design and... You could see kind of very flat, solid shapes of color, very flat, and you could see kind of how it looks on the app. And and there's a lot you can do with the material design. And again, um, using and following the material design is very useful in making Android. They have a whole color theme that you can follow and so on. It's a really uh, quite a, a different design. And as you can see, I'm in a browser and look, they, they have the material design working. Look, when I roll over, you can see the see the shadow coming up underneath that rectangle there. That's material design. Their, their idea is that the paper is being lifted off you. This is how we're giving feedback. Hey, you selected this, right? And, there, and this is through a browser. So it's using a web app. We're using some JavaScript, you know, or CSS, basically that, that would be CSS you know, recognizing the mouse over and having a shadow come. So if you take web design, you would learn some things like that. Again, following design standards with that, with the shadow underneath there and stuff. Very interesting, great way to learn and grow. Uh, we kind of talked about responsive design already. Again, here's some reading about responsive design. 
Again, basically how responsive design works is that we change the layout of the, the website for mobile, right? So as the screen gets smaller, what we're doing is we're testing the dimensions and pixels. So when I say measure, we're measuring pixels. Pixels are the dots in the screen. And so changing the size according to your dimension is a that. And then, oh, here's a mobile marketing magazine. So I have a link there. Um, this is, again, they talk about marketing through a mobile device on here. Um, you know, they're basically articles and things like that. They talk about different devices, as you can see. Uh, Pinterest and, 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 you know, my next talk is going to really be about, uh, uh, you know, following the images. I mean, if you look at the traditional way that websites used to be compared to the, what they are now, is, is, is so much different. And the reason why is because of the uh, bandwidth, right? We've all gone to sort of more high speed. Our mobile phones now have more high speed than they used to. If you remember the early days of, of mobile, um, I don't know if you, you had a flip phone. Who had a flip phone? I did. Yeah, right? Do you remember what they used to look like on a flip phone, the websites? They were all kind of, you know, just just plain text, right? Did you see what Google? If you want to do research, the best, place, what a great place to do research. If in, in if you're in any of my classes, we always start with archive.org. I don't know if you've ever heard of archive.org. It's the greatest website ever. So the we greatest website ever is called archive.org, and um, basically it's a library. It's the you know it's the internet library. It's different than Wikipedia. I would say Wikipedia is the internet. Um, um, encyclopedia, where the Internet Archive is the Internet's uh, library. And uh, it's in San Francisco, and they have a big party probably this weekend, I think they do. And it's a great place, and um, if you want to go visit, and if you're ever in a city, uh, it's on, I believe, Gary and 19th Avenue. You, ever, you know, you're driving up, you're driving up 280. And then you go, and it says Golden Gate Bridge this way, and you're on, and it goes on to 19th Avenue, right? And you go along, and you got buildings on both sides. Then you go through the little Golden Gate Park, right? You go through the forest and Golden Gate Park, and you come out the other side, and there's more 19th Avenue, and there's more. And you go, and then there's cross section of 19th and Gary before you get to the Golden Gate Bridge. There, there's a giant white church, and it was old Christ Scientist, I believe, it was the Christ Scientist Church. And they have talks in there all the time. And you just walk in the door. The doors are open. Go in there. Talk to them. I'm thinking of donating some old software that I have that I don't think they even have from the 90s, from the 80s, actually. And um, But what is really good about this is it will show you the Wayback Machine. What was the Internet like? Let's look at what uh, Yahoo was like in 1990s. So I'm going to type in Yahoo. And I'm going to hit Return. And so what it'll do is it has, um, what it does is archive the internet. So it takes websites and stores them, stores the entire website at a certain date in a certain time. So let's go back to 1997, which was probably the biggest year of the internet, I think. So it's when most of the technology changed and became, um, you know, it's when JavaScript was very popular and, and, and cascading style sheets got, and HTML4 came out or something like that. So... Yeah, Blackberry. A lot of things happened in 1997. It was a crazy year. And so let's go look at what Yahoo used to look like back then. And you'll see. Oh, it's it's trying. I think it's trying. Maybe it's not. Go on, give me give me an old date. Give me an old date. There we go. And so you'll see, you know, not a lot of graphics. Basically, what Yahoo was back then was a directory as well. It was more of a, it was more like the Yellow Pages if you even knew what the Yellow Pages were. It's basically a list of of websites in a category. So that's why it was called a directory. But as you can see, you know, not a lot of graphics, mostly text. You know, the internet was slow. And look at these 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 graphics up here. You know, this is just you know these are gifs, highly <laughs> compressed gifs. And so, you know, looking back in time and where we've been and where we're going is, you know, quite amazing, 20 years. And, um, you know, I, I've seen it all, you know, from the beginning to now. And, uh, you know.
you know, just seeing the evolution. And now, you know, we got these pages that look like this now with all these graphics and all these photos and information, you know, it's it's such a uh, thing. So this was a, a kind of uh, interesting website called the Mobile Marketing Website. So you might want to read some of these things if you're interested in learning more about marketing, especially on your phone. Um, they talk about, you know, things programming and stuff. So that was on my link. Um, and then this one talks about Android. Again, Android is very popular. What's more popular, the Apple or Android? Both. Which one in the world? The world, Android. Android, yes. Android is the most popular. California, yeah, well, it depends on where you're at, yes. But, you know, around the world, Android is by far much larger than Apple. And, you know, mostly because of the, the, the price, right? I can buy Android device in, in any country and it's going to be a lot cheaper than Apple. And so, uh, you know, if I'm going to make an app, you know, do I make it for Android or make it for Google? Well, it depends on your audience, I guess it would be. And so this is a good website. It talks all about Android. Uh, you know, I used to have an Android device. I've, I've gone back to Apple. Um, you know, I liked it a lot. I liked the design. I liked the, the, um, the, the material design. Very interesting. Uh huh. Those type of ones, and they always end up getting like corrupted by somebody getting in touch with the publisher into yeah. like the actual phone stuff. So yeah, the security is a problem. No doubt. The biggest reason why I switched to Apple is mm -hmm. I didn't like the interface of Apple, but I liked the security aspect of it. Yeah. It was more important. And I, I'm sure Google is really working hard on on you know really that you know they need to to make that more tighter. Um, Because they don't control the hardware, right? Where Apple controls everything from, you know, the, 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 the phone, the hardware, all the chips that go into the device and everything is all controlled by Apple. Where Android, you got the HTC, Samsung, and all those different things. So they have different hardware, different firmware. Yeah. Yeah, that's why it makes it much harder. And then, of course, uh, Google Images is very popular, especially on a phone. You'll notice that um, you know when people search, they like searching for images as well. You'll notice the distribute here. Let's look at this stat right here. Um, Im this is image. This is look Google Image search. It's very popular. So um, don't forget about your images and making sure you have good images and whatever you're doing um, is the whole point here. And so, um, and, and I, if you don't search, you might want to try again. If you just go to Google and type in um, images. Um, so if you type in, uh, I'm going to type in my products. Ooh, stud finders. And if I just go to images, you see people search on images all the time. You notice what Google has done is they, they've even taken the material design idea and put it above here. Do you see that? Right? These are the colors. These are material design colors right here. This is their material design colors. And as you can see, they'll give you um, you know, different suggestions. And then as you roll over, it'll show you size and that and so on. So you have a whole bunch of images. How do they, they show up? Well, of course, you, you add tags to your images. So make sure that your images, if you're using images on your site or in your app or wherever you have them, that they are tagged properly using meta tags. And what are the meta tags? Well, they would be um, the names. So this is my website, and I have text that's associated with this. This is actually the title of the page as well. I don't know. Um, you know, you got Yeah, there's just a variety. Oh, look at that. There's a QR code and so on. Oh, here's my display in French. Is that French? Didn't know I had a French display. There it is. So again, words that are associated with the picture help. Okay, words that are associated with the picture. So that's uh, sort of what I wanted to talk about there. And then, of course, Pinterest. If you are a mobile person, Pinterest is uh, very, very, very popular. Uh, if you look here, Pinterest is um, another great mobile device that talks about um, you know images. Right? You guys have a Pinterest account? Any of you? No. Yeah. You know, Pinterest is is a good way, and it's a it's a it's a good marketing idea. Um, 
and you can pin people. You have people. You can put code on your website to have people pin your pictures on their their uh, on their 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 board. I guess what do they call it on? Yeah, that'd be good for like those Etsy people who are like running their marketing. Yes. My plugin isn't working right now because it's down, but uh, I used to have a plugin on the Zircon page that you, you, you roll over the image and the printer's icon shows up. You ever see that? And then you can click on it and pin it right there. Oh. Yeah, so there's a plugin you can put in your, your WordPress because we use WordPress. Um, and then what is this? Yeah, I would say, you know, well, it depends. You know, you still need to know, um, you still need to know how to do coding because WordPress can only build do so much and then you have to go in and tweak it to do it you know if, if you look at my site here this site right here you know this is WordPress but m m much of the layout is hand coded uh, the default themes like this are not possible without hand coding so much of it is is a mixture of we use WordPress as the kind of the content management system right to manage it but to build the, the layout is, is is WordPress but it's mostly hand-coded um, so you know you, you really I mean there's a lot of pre-made stuff you still need to learn that's why we still offer the HTML class if WordPress was just such a great thing we wouldn't even have to offer HTML anymore but you can't, you can't make a site you'll never be successful without knowing some of the code okay so this was a good um, article about targeting Facebook ads I thought I was reading that the other day. I linked that. Uh, and then if you haven't never watched this video, this is a good one you might want to watch someday. It's called Generation Like. Uh, if you've never seen that, especially for mobile marketing, you know, what people and how they market on Facebook. People are marketing right to Facebook with the like. And so this is a whole hour long um, video. If you've never seen Generation Like, it's a little older. It's a PBS special, but um, it really talks about marketing. The numbers right there for anyone to see. Are the likes you get? Are they about you or? The so they talk to people about likes and about kids and Generation X, Generation Y, whatever you know, and and then they talk a lot about that. You know, kids today are much more mobile. My my sons are constantly on their phone. You know, they 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 have it in their hand constantly. And so, how do I get to them? How do I market to them? You know, and and you know through Facebook, Instagram. They're all Instagram people. Uh, I'm not very good at Instagram, so I can't really show you that. My wife is very Instagram oriented. She has a website. Um, um, it's kind of broken right now. I got to fix it. She keeps yelling at me to fix it. The biggest problem with WordPress is you have to keep updating it, and that's the problem. I haven't updated it. And so she has a website with her art. That's why she, she wants to go to the painting thing today over there. And then uh, on here, then um, uh, she has Instagram. So she takes and posts her pictures of her art here and then links it to Instagram. And so when she gets followers on Instagram, it can redirect them right to the store here. Um, boy, this is awful slow. Wow. Yeah, I, I don't know what I clicked on. I probably She probably has a lot of images. I don't know. Shouldn't be that slow. The server needs a little optimizing as well. You know, the biggest challenge with the web is you're constantly having to learn and build and update, learn, build, update, learn, build, update. But as you can see, you know, she takes these photos of these right here and then posts them on Instagram. And so she makes a relationship between Instagram and her site. And so, again, just like you saw on my Zircon page, right, I have videos that are from YouTube and linked directly to my website as well. So making those connections are very important. I think I talked about rich cards earlier. Remember uh, the, the Google rich cards, right? And that's right. So you can actually format your um, content to be a rich card. Um, so it, it looks proper on uh, mobile. So that's the link there. Oh, here's how to make the rich card. Right there. So they have guides, right? So if you have a company or a business, you should make some rich cards 
so that people and what the whole point of this is this is mobile searching you saw me earlier talking and and they're actually using rich cards now in, in the regular desktop searching too so it's just a way of formatting your content that you already have on your website reformatting it in a in a way that Google will package it like this right you want it to look like this on Google so you as a designer, you as a company, you need to get people to, to format it properly so it looks right in Pinterest or in there. And that's called Rich Gallery, and you should learn how to do that as well. And I even have one more right here. Of a, a, so I'm a strong believer in this, and I haven't really done enough of it. Uh, again, we want to have rich cards. See, looking like this. Remember, this is the old way. What they're showing you here is, look, here's the old way, right? Old search. Right, old old way, right? Ah, uh, new way. Picture, time, date, content, stars, right? New way, rich. Look at this. Okay, so you know, the, the rich. You you really need to think about that if you're doing mobile marketing. Your content needs to be formatted properly for the mobile device. Is my whole point there. And then I have a link to Pinterest. This is Pinterest Business. They talk about how to, um, you know, add your business to Pinterest and how you can use your business on Pinterest right here. Yeah, and they have some success stories. You might want to read some of that. Uh, and then if you have, if you don't want know what an Amazon affiliate is, you guys ever heard of Amazon affiliate? No. Okay. Well, let's learn. So uh, let's say you you want to be rich, right? I want to make a Ten thousand dollars a month with sitting and watching a oh, oh, TV. How about that? I don't want to have to do anything. Well, what I could do is I could make properties online. Let's say a website, blog, or something like that, and then I can suggest products. Oh, I tried this. Uh, you know, Post-it notes. These are the best Post-it notes on the planet. They're really good. Um, click here and go buy them at Amazon. And somebody clicks on your blog, your website, your video, your video as well, YouTube video. They click on it, go to Amazon, and they buy that product. Cha-ching. Amazon will give you 10% or 8%. Um, wait, what do you say? Yeah. Facebook. There's that Thai guy that was always like reading books or whatever, and he'd constantly ask like, people mm -hmm. all the time. He was clicking those up to Amazon store ads. And then anyone who went through his website, he got a commission off of it. Yeah. Every single person, even though he didn't yeah. own the product or he didn't yeah. do any of that stuff, he was just like reading a book. Yeah. That's why this stuff is amazing. He makes so much money. Yeah, people are making tons of money off of this. Tons of money. Yeah, tons. Thousands of dollars a month. So, um, you know, you can become an Amazon affiliate, you know, and you don't even have to uh, write. They don't even have to buy the product that you write about. Let's say I make a blog and I sell stud finders, right? I, I, I wouldn't do that to my company because I make their website, but... I have the knowledge of stud finders. I make a website all about stud finders, you know, a blog. Oh, this is the latest, greatest product. You know, it does this, this, and this. And, you know, here's some demo pictures, blah, blah, blah. Oh, here's a button that you click on and you can go and buy it. And they click on it and they go to Amazon. They're looking at the, the, the stud finder. And, uh, I don't really need it, but I need a hammer. And they buy that hammer. I still get the commission on that hammer because they came from my property to Amazon and if they buy within 24 hours, because Amazon's tracking you, of course, they have cookies and all that stuff. If they buy within 24 hours any product, you get a commission. And provided that they, you get the commission. Yes. Okay, so um, boy, you as a college student, you guys could be doing that right now, get, making money and going to college at the same time. Right, so think about it. There's some reading there. I, I, boy, I've turned so many students onto this right now. I don't know. I, I used to teach at Menlo College. I, well, maybe I still do. I don't know. I, I think I gave them up. I, I taught there for eight years, and then this year they want me to teach. Uh, to, 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 they wanted to change my hours, and I said no. They want me to. Do, I used to do eight week classes, and then now they want me to do six week classes. And I don't feel like driving all the way to Atherton for six weeks. You know, so I kind of gave up. But I would show my, they're all business students, and I would show the business students this. I'm like, oh, come on, you're, you're calling. And they're all like, oh, because they all want to be entrepreneurs too. I'm like, eh, you know, go make an Amazon affiliate. Well, their light bulbs were all going on. Yeah, it's a good idea. You can, there's a whole bunch of YouTube videos as well. So if you want, you can watch YouTube videos on that.
Uh, and then here, if you want to learn about Facebook and business, here's Facebook business. Again, you can make ads on Facebook and have them link those ads to uh, Amazon and make money, right? Does this change us a lot with that new law or new criteria? Yes, I'm dealing with that right now, especially with Europe, right? Europe has a new... Yeah, so I actually li listed some information down here for that, didn't I? Somewhere, I thought I did. And if I didn't, um, here it is, this one right here. Are you prepared? Here it is. So Yoast is the, uh, well, let's get, let me finish my links and then we'll come back to that. Our thing you might want to read is voice search is very popular. Look at Google. Google says 20% of mobile queries or searches are ver voice searches. So how many people are talking into your phone, right? Do you ever ask Siri something? Oh, yeah. I don't know either. But of course, some people are saying, uh, right? Uh, Google, Google this, what? Google, where's the closest flower shop? I've seen Star Trek computer style, like computer. Yeah. But the whole point here is that it's becoming very popular, and so you should consider, um, you know, thinking about it if you're going to be a mobile marketing person or, or getting to deal with it, that people can talk into their phone now, right? Um, one thing that you should consider is, and what, what they're talking about, is making sure that your content is mobile friendly. And what I mean by that is, is voice friendly is what I meant. One way I think they're doing this, and this was something that uh, confused me, and, let, let me, and, and uh, I was a little bit... Um, and let's go to Google for a moment. Uh, again, Google's about words. So let's go. I'm, I'm going to keep typing this over and over again. Um, so back in the days, and I love going back in time. So back in the days when I would write the title tag. So the, these are called tags. So this is the title tag. See it right here? So that is the title that's associated to either a video or a web page or whatever, and then Google uses that to rank you in the search engine. That's sort of how Google works. Remember the word guy was talking about that, the dude from Google? Well, um, you'll notice the old way I used to write my title tag would be kind of a sentence like, how to use a Zircon Stud Sensor Edge Stud Finder to find wall studs. Hence, I would still, you would put in a lot of keywords. Notice I use the word studs, stud, stud sensor, Zircon, I don't use the word Zircon again, and so on. So I'm putting buzzwords in there that people, that search engines would, you know, read and rank. But today, uh, about you know two, three years ago, we started doing this, putting the dash in there. See the dash, metal detectors dash scanners, Zircon Corporate Stud Finder dash, and. I think some of the reason why is because of voice search. Now, I haven't done enough research to say, yeah, that's the reason why we're doing it. But I think by chunking the data, instead of having it be in a, a, in a sentence form, but more of buzzwords, you know, somebody says to Siri, uh, show me stud finders or stud sensors, right? This is easier for the voice um, algorithm to see this instead of in a sentence form. That makes sense. I, I'm, I'm thinking that's the reason why. Maybe it's better for search engines. But that's, you know, we're going to this now, and I haven't, I haven't come up with a, um, a definitive answer why. You know, Amazon does it. You see that? See, shop Zircon stud finders with the little dash and an Amazon, right? eBay does it. You know, and so, and Wikipedia does a little dash. You, it doesn't matter what you put in there, but they, you know, look. A whole bunch of them. Walmart puts a dash right here. Home Depot does it as well. Uh, I just noticed that like two years ago, and I'm like, why are they going? I haven't done enough research, but um, I'm assuming it might be for voice, voice, voice search. I don't. I lost my my stuff, and so that was this link right here. Oh, I spelled effect wrong. Is that why? Uh, here's the Google Analytics. Um, if you don't know what Google Analytics is, it's basically the data that Google uses to, and Google tracks everything you do, where you're at, what's your IP address, what kind of computer you're on, what time of day, 
Um, they, they, they take every piece of information and they put it in there and they get, they make it available to you. They make it available to the people. What I meant to you is people that have Google accounts and go and have properties, right? I have a YouTube channel. I get an analytics data from that. I have, um, I have a, um, I have a website. I get analytics data from that. I can put Google on my site and how it works is you take Google code, they give you the code, you put it on your site, you put it on your YouTube channel, you put it there, you put it there, and they give you all that data. They, you know, you get data from them. Now how that's going to be affected by the new laws, especially in Europe, um, right here, you got the new, here it is, the new uh, general data protection regulation in Europe, is, it's, it's a big challenge. Can I can I track people's IP address? Well, they say no. I don't have control over that. Google's doing that automatically with Google Analytics. Me as a company, do I have um, do I need to be aware of that? Am I going to be legally, um, you know, liable for this? I don't know. My lawyers are coming down on me. Literally, I've I've had meetings with lawyers at my company here telling me what are we going to do? How are we going to deal with this? And, I sent them this link yesterday. This is a link. I just, here, read this. I didn't have time to read it myself. But what is Yoast? Yoast is the tracking plugin for WordPress. So Yoast is the in between. It's a software that you put on your website in WordPress that then does all the tracking, Google tracking, and all that's for you. So right now they're, they're giving you information on how to deal with it, and I ha just haven't read it yet. But I, I sent them that yesterday. You can watch the video. I've watched it some of it already. Mm -hmm. So how to deal with it. Hey, your Gastman email us saying that a Yoast Con 2017. Dixon Jones mentioned that certain plugins collect data about users, and this might cause problems with the EU general, general data protection. I'm not going to play the whole video, but you get the idea. That's actually probably big business right now. Can you imagine being a consultant and saying, hey, I can make your website compliant with the new laws. Pay me $10,000. I'll come in and I'll make your website there. I can see people doing that right now because that, that, yeah, I'm ready to hire somebody to come and do it. I don't, wanna, I don't have time to do that, right? Say your company. You don't have staff on that knows that stuff. You know, you don't, you know, and so I'm sure that we probably can search on Google for consultant for whatever this law is, the general whatever. What did I just say? General whatever. You probably find a whole bunch of them. That would be a, be a good business right now. Um, what else? Uh, this was some Forbes. What is this? Best digital marketing strategies for the next, uh, uh, this, this year. Tips for social media marketing and so on. So that's pretty good reading as well. And then this one is uh, uh, Think. Um, this is what what is Brand Lift. This is new new things that Google comes up with. Um, I don't know. Google comes up with all kinds of new things all the time. They're really trying to um, um, give you conversion. You know, get people to your site, get them to buy products, and so on. Okay, let's get to, uh, so that I gave you this handout. If you want to read more and learn more, there's a whole bunch of stuff on there. That's just my research within uh, a day or two that I, I put together for you. Um, let's get to, uh, let's get to what um, the teacher sent you. And you can do that and then you can go home. We'll do what he wants you to do. How about that? Let's, let me go and find it. Did he send this stuff to you? Let me see what he... Okay, let me see what he, he wrote. Let me see what he wrote to me. And let me stop this video. Okay, we're going to make a sample email campaign uh, using Microsoft Word. So again, I started my text. Here's my email marketing campaign. Uh, here's my audience. I'm going to get an audience list by putting an email sign up sheet on my blog or on my um, on my website and here we go I'm gonna um, I'm using Microsoft Word so I've taken a screen capture here it is 
Here's my sign up. I'm stealing one from somebody else's site. You can just steal it from somebody else's site is what I would do. Uh, again, to steal an image is Command Shift 4 on a Mac or using snipping tool on Windows. Draw a box around there. Hey, it took a picture. Where's that picture? It puts it on the desktop. So then I go over to my Word here and I'm going to go and insert that. So I'm going to go under uh, either insert here for picture or I can use insert here and say picture right there. And then if I can do picture from my desktop, see it right here from my file, and I can go to desktop and the latest one is probably the last one I did. This is my latest screen capture and boom, there it is. Okay, so I have this on my website. What am I going to do with that list? Well, I'm going to send them uh, my latest, latest product lately. Late, L A T E S, latest product info uh, email campaign. And so then I would make a nice email campaign. Here's how I would do it quickly to get this over with I would just go to Amazon and take some of the information from Amazon. Uh, so let's find, again, one of my latest products is this one. This is a brand new product that just came out at the beginning of the year. It's called an A A100. So um, here's what I would do. Uh, again, I would take a screen capture because it doesn't look like I can steal the picture from there, and it's not a very good picture. The, I took that photo, so I shouldn't say that's not a very good picture. It's a beautiful picture. Okay, so um, I can then, again, take a screen capture. Command, Shift, 4. Draw a box around it. Steal the name of it right here. And so then I would then go back to my Microsoft Word and um, insert the product. You might make a table if you've never used a table in Microsoft Word. Think about this, you know, those, those email software programs have tables in them so you can move things around and do that. So I would mimic that inside of Microsoft Word here. How I would mimic that is uh, remember a table is just a basic grid. So plan, think about your design. You got a grid there. I might do two columns where I have my product over here and then my product information over here. Right? And then maybe some stats, stats of the product right there. And then some social media links. And then a big link right here, it says uh, buy, <coughs> buy at Amazon. And then we'll have a link go from there to Amazon. Okay, so this is what I think he wants you to do. He just wants you to come up with something like this. You do it in Microsoft Word is what I'm trying to say. I don't think he expects you to have that constant contact. Or just do it in Microsoft Word just like this. Here, I'll show you real quick how I do it. Again, uh, I would use a table. When you use a table in Microsoft Word, you can draw like this. Boom, 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 boom. See how I'm making little grids? I'm going to do like two columns, uh, three table, boom, like that. You can turn these lines off because I'm not using the lines. I'm not going to use the table. I'm just going to use the boxes for layout. To turn the lines off, you'll notice it says border up here in the upper corner. I can come up there and say uh, hidden. All right, no border. Boom. Oh, you gotta, I guess select the whole table. I'll click on the... Uh, this little X thing in the upper corner selects the whole thing. See the little X thing up here in the whole corner up there? And say border, no border. Boom. No borders. We're just using it for layout purposes. So I'm going to click inside the top cell, and I'm going to put my image in there. Again, insert uh, pictures, uh, photo browser. No, not photo browser. I want picture from file. And then I, here's my screen capture right there. Boom. There it is. Uh oh, if it's too big and starts, it's okay if it goes to the second page. In fact, maybe I'll make it on the second page. Maybe we can actually, because um, you're going to run out of room. We'll push this down. It's never going to fit on one page. There we go. Here we go. So uh, we got our product. And then let's take our text over here. Uh, let's copy this text. I'm going to steal this text by using Command C or, of course, Control C. Go in the word over there and paste it over there. Uh oh, if it's really big and ugly text, you can highlight the text, of course, inside of Microsoft Word, and you can change the font. Make yourself a nice font. That's pretty ugly there. Um, how about we do a nice uh, uh, Garamond uh, regular? 
Oh, that's much nicer. Change the size a little bit. That's kind of big. There we go. That looks better. And then uh, let's steal some more stuff from Microsoft, from here. How about we steal this right here? Okay, now um, I don't have uh, that data. But what I can do is um, I can use, uh, again, we could take a screen capture. Command, Shift, 4. And draw a box. And then again, I can go to Microsoft Word and I can insert that <coughs> from file. There it is. If it's too big, you can shrink this down. <coughs> oh, it's upside down. <coughs> there we go. What else we might have in our email campaign? We got some custom room. Customer. Oh, here, this text. We got our bulleted items here. Let's copy that. We got bulleted items there. Put that in there. If you don't like that font, you can highlight it and let's change it to. Um, you might have an opt in in there. You know, email. The, or we're, they're already opt in. This is my email campaign. Mm -hmm. but, but, oh, we were doing Garamond, right? Yeah. Why is somebody calling me from Lodi? They want me to buy wine. Uh oh, look at that! It changed to, to look when I changed the font. It changed to like little little thing there. It's kind of crazy. Okay, let's go to a second page there or the second tab. Remember these are tabs here, so we can go to a second tab. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, oh, here we go. We got a nice sort of photo here. Oh, look at this nice text here. So we can give more information here. We maybe steal this photo as well. You can give more than one photo. Maybe take this photo as well. It's a nice photo here. And then of course they even have more text here. It's nice to have a, you know, give them a lot of information in the email campaign. Um, so we can go and insert that. Um, maybe make that kind of small. Well, that's not that's gonna go to the second page. Whatever, we can go to the second page. Now there should be a table cell on this side over here, isn't there? Oh, I guess I'm gonna have to show the table cells. I can turn them off later. How about we put the borders back on so we know where the stuff is at? I'm gonna put the borders back on um under table and then table. I'm gonna put the borders back on and then turn them off at the end. There we go. So I can see. Oh, that didn't even go. See, this was I didn't even get that in there. I'm gonna cut that out of there. Put it in there. There we go. And then we can grab maybe a little bit more text. Oh, I love bulleted stuff. You don't want people reading this stuff. But more bulleted stuff here. There we go. I don't know. Oh, look at all the photos. Oh, look at that. That's my photo. That's my photo. That's my photo. That's my photo. These are all my photos. Oh, I got all kinds of photos on there. So uh, let's let's put that in there. Let's put that, maybe some more bulleted stuff. Maybe change the font if you want there. And last thing uh, we want, what did, what did I say? What did I draw on the board? Did we have something else? Oh, we want social media. And then we want to have a link to them to uh, buy at Amazon, right? So uh, where can I steal the social media? Well, I can go to uh, Zircon website. Here we go. Look at this right there. Boom. Boom. Right there. Command Shift 4. Highlight this right there. Steal that. Let's go and put that in there. Um, so, in my email campaign, I'll say follow us on social media. And then let's insert our images in there. If it's too big, shrink it down. Run shrink down. Come on, you can do it. Shrink down. There we go. And then, um, and then, uh, what are we gonna say? Oh, love, love this product. Buy now. And then um, we could either do. Um, do you want? We could steal the Amazon. Don't they have a buy button on Amazon? Where's the buy button? Let's steal the buy button from Amazon. Don't they have a buy button? Add to cart? No. Is there a buy button? That's what I'm... 
Oh, I want a buy button. Well, here we go. Let's just go to Google and steal, find a, let's put a buy, let's put in buy button. Oh, that's not the B button and images. Here we go. Well, if you go over here to uh, tools and go to user rights right here, see how it says user rights? I'm going to go to where it says labeled for reuse and modification, which in theory would give you the ability to use and reuse and change that. So whenever you're downloading images and stealing things, um, make sure you're trying to be copyright compliant. One way to do that inside of, of uh, Google is to go to uh, images, tools, and uh, use this button right here where it says labeled for reuse and modification. And then, uh, oh, of course they get uglier. <laughs> But this one's not too bad. I, I, I don't mind green um, order. Let's see. Uh, these are a bunch uglier. Or you can make your own in Illustrator or Photoshop, of course, if you had time. Uh, I'm going to use the. Um, where's a buy? Where's there a buy? Buy now. I guess we'd use this ugly buy. <laughs> Whatever. I'm going to use this ugly buy. One way you can get this into there as well instead of saving it is you can actually copy. So if you right click and say copy from um, from Google Images, copy, you can then go to your uh, Word and paste it, edit, paste. No, it didn't work, did it? Why didn't it work? Paste destination format. What it, why, it didn't paste. Text only. I guess it didn't work. Well, maybe. And how about we save it on my computer? Save image as. Let's put it on my. Oh, it's not even. Oh yeah, it's not me save that. This is buy button. And then I'm gonna save it on my desktop. And let's go to over to Word here. Let's go and place that in there again under insert. You got pictures right here. I'm gonna say pictures from file right there. I'm gonna grab my buy button in there. Boom, there it is. Then um, make it a little bit smaller so it's not so crazy. Maybe centered inside there so it's in the center. So we wanna put a hyperlink on there that'll go to Amazon. Hyperlink that's gonna to go to Amazon. So uh, in Microsoft uh, Word, you can make hyperlinks. So again, we're gonna to go to Amazon to buy this. So let's go to Amazon. Where's my Amazon? Here it is. No, where's my Amazon? Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. What happened to my Amazon? Uh, lost my Amazon. I lost. Let me log out of this. Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. I was on the Amazon page, wasn't I? Where is it? Amazon. Oh, I lost it. No. No. Amazon. Oh, I guess I have to go back. And what probably we were doing Zircon A100. Zircon A100. <clears throat> there it is. Here's the page. Uh, I'm going to highlight the text at the top up there. I'm going to highlight the address. I'm going to copy Command C, or if I'm on Windows, I use Control C. I'm going to go back to Word. I'm going to click on my image. And to make this a hyperlink, I'm going to go under Insert uh, Links. See it right here where it says Links inside Word? And I'm going to say Link right here. And then I'm going to paste my address in there. Boom. And I'm going to hit OK. And so when somebody clicks on this, it'll then go, it'll open up the browser and go to Amazon. So I think if you do something like this for the instructor, I think that's what he's looking for. Let's Let's read... Create an email copy to promote your product. I just stole from Amazon. Make it up. Uh, consider all the stuff. Email should include a subject. Con oh, just reformat what I just did into an email looking thing. Images with links. We just made a link. If you want to make a Word link, you can do the same thing. Let me show you that. Again, in Microsoft Word, you can also, um, let's say you wanted to have a link in here where it says Amazon right here. See Amazon Word right there? You can highlight that, go to links as well, and then you can say link right there. See that? And then just paste that in there. There you go. So again, you'll get a hyperlink right there. Same thing. Uh, links in practice and glance at email beginning to react, react. There are no rights or wrong answer to practice. Just browse the emails. Have received the email from the prompt. Click email. Try me. Assignment two week. You need to get a website ready so you reference your website in your email campaign.
So, what's it? He didn't send you a login and password, though? I would have helped you make it. Okay. So when we make our website, we said we're going to figure that out on WordPress then, I guess? Yeah, I thought, um, yeah. Just use it. Uh, you could just use my products. Just steal some of my images and make one page. You can steal my products. That's fine. Just go to zircon.com and download some pictures and steal the text and make a page. It's not that hard. You can, I'm, you know, I meant stealing my stuff is not that hard.